action. I'm sitting at the bar with a beautiful woman sitting on my lap. She's kissing on my neck and me, I'm feeling on her booty. And all of a sudden she gets a phone call. Her phone goes ring, ring. She answers that joint. And I'm looking at her like, who was she talking to? I hear a man's voice. When she gets off the phone, she looks at me and she says, my baby's sick. And I'm like, uh, was that the babysitter? She says, no, silly, that's my husband. <laughs> I politely nudge her off my lap, kiss her on the forehead and say, hey, go check on your baby. That situation blew my mind because I'm like, hey, wives are really out here cheating on their husbands with no regard. She's like, mama's got to have a life too. Wives have got to have lives too. I can only speak from my own personal experience. I know the statistics say between like 50 and 70% of wives cheat on their husbands. They say they cheat on their mate. They get bored or uh, they were, the husband was controlling. They have all these different reasons on why they choose to cheat on their husbands. But I need to have this conversation from man to man because you need to prepare yourself for marriage. There are a lot of people out here, especially religious people. They say, get married, start a family. I know that having a family in America is an economic power structure. I understand this, but also I do understand that as a man, you have zero authority. As soon as you get married, your wife controls your whole life. I'll tell you what, man, a baby mama can make your life difficult, but an ex-wife, she'll destroy your life. She's going to take 50% of everything you own. And the most important thing is if you have children, she will take your children. Now, it's not just wives running the streets. I've been in workplaces also. And at these workplaces, I've worked with married women. And these married women, they'll, say, they'll tell me the wildest things in the whole world. You my play husband. You my work husband. I, hey, one, one time I got real bold. And so I asked the woman, I said, what would your husband think if he knew that you had a, a work husband? She said, oh, I told my husband about you. I was like, hold on, on, wait, wait, wait. This woman trying to get me popped. <laughs> I'm going to come out of work one day, and all of a sudden I got a duck in cover because she's telling her husband about her work husband. Think about how crazy that is. I'm going to repeat that number for you one more time. Between 50 and 70% of women who are married cheat on their husbands. Now, what kind of institution is that? Why would I advocate for any man to go be someone's husband right now and today when I know that as a husband, you have zero authority over your household, I dare you. If you're married, go to your wife and tell your wife, make me a sandwich and pack my lunch. <laughs> and don't say, please. I'm not telling anyone to be abusive or controlling. My point is that she has options and you don't have any options. If at any point in time, you don't fulfill your duties as a husband, as a provider, as a protector, or if you don't satisfy her in the bedroom, she's going to cheat on you. Ain't that an unfortunate truth because women have options with zero liability. She walk into a marriage and gain 300 pounds and you can't go nowhere. You can't do anything because there are a lot of men who are trapped in a marriage right now because they completely understand. If they leave that woman, they lose access to their children. They lose their pension. They lose their 401k. And all of a sudden, they ain't got no place to live. They go from a three-bedroom house or four-bedroom house to a one-bedroom apartment, seeing their children every other weekend, talking about how in the world can you possibly raise a child when you don't have no authority over that child? How can you be the head of a household if you have zero authority in that household? See, like when I was in the military, I had no way to tell my superiors, I'm not going to do that. I don't feel like doing that today. If authority is optional, then it's not authority. If submission is optional, then it's not submission. If we don't talk about the institutions that are controlling our lives right now, then we'll never be free people. As men, your goal and your job is to conquer and to dominate. That's what you're supposed to do. But the way the legal system is structured right now, you cannot dominate and you cannot conquer. You have zero authority when it comes to relationships in America right now. So the only thing that you can do is be as respectful as possible. Uh, if you want to have a relationship, you engage in whatever relations that you want to engage in please and thank you, but you always maintain your boundaries. You always maintain your masculine frame. You can do whatever you want and I can do whatever I want. But as soon as I don't like the things that you're doing, I ask you to go and have a nice day. Not only do you go have a nice day, please go have a nice life. Because as a man, I don't think that you're supposed to submit to anyone, not a woman, not a government, not a job, not no another man. You're supposed to be a powerful entity. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.
taking the 